Do you ever feel like time is moving faster these days? Well, that might be because something weird is happening to the Earth. Okay, so we know that the Earth rotates, at least most of us do. Unless you're a member of the Flat Earth Society, in which case, welcome. But assuming that the Earth is in fact spinning, we know that it spins once every 24 hours, right? Well, not exactly. The rotation of the Earth isn't fixed, it can speed up and slow down at different times, and right now is one of those times. The Earth is spinning faster than ever before. Well, more specifically, this is the fastest it's rotated in the time since we've been officially measuring the Earth's spin, which only dates back to around 1970, so really it's the fastest the Earth has rotated in at least 55 years. And the speed of the Earth's rotation has actually been accelerating since around 2020. If the Flat Earthers are still here, I'm sure there's a conspiracy about how that lines up with global events. And then the shortest day ever recorded came in July 2024, with the Earth rotating a full 1.66 milliseconds less than 24 hours. The blink of an eye is on average between 100 and 150 milliseconds, so 1 100th of a blink. Anyway, let's get to the big question. Should we panic? Well, consider this. If you zoom out way beyond the 20th century and go back in time, the Earth is actually spinning much more slowly than ever before. 600 million years ago, one day only lasted 21 hours. It's pretty confusing. So here's the deal. There are many factors that affect the rotation of the Earth. The Sun and the Moon are big players, but also the Earth's own composition can change how fast it spins on any given day. The Sun is really big, but it actually has a pretty minimal effect on the Earth's rotation. If anything, energy from the Sun actually pushes the Earth to spin faster, but it's greatly outweighed by our closest neighbor, the Moon. That thing actually has a very strong effect on how fast we spin. Most of this happens through something called tidal friction. This is a very simplified explanation of how that works, so the gravity of the Moon pulls on the water in the oceans and makes a bulge. This is high tide. And as the moon circles the earth, it pulls that bulge along with it, except the earth itself is actually spinning faster than the orbit of the moon, so the bulge is lagging behind the speed of the earth. And that will actually work to slow the earth down. It adds about 2 milliseconds to the length of the day every 100 years, and over a long enough period of time, it will eventually slow the rotation of the planet until it matches the orbit of the moon. But literally everything on Earth will be dead by the time that happens, so don't worry too much about it. So on average, the Moon makes the Earth spin more slowly, but right now the Moon is also one of the factors making the Earth spin faster. The Moon doesn't always orbit around the middle of the Earth, sometimes it wanders up to orbit closer to the poles. And right now is one of those times. We call that declination. The closer the Moon is to the Earth's pole, the higher the declination, and during these periods the Moon is pulling less on the middle of the Earth and more on the top, which actually causes us to spin faster. But this cycle of the Moon is normal, so it's not the only thing that would explain the Earth moving faster than it has in decades. And for the final piece of the puzzle, we have to look at the Earth itself. The distribution of mass around the planet is going to have a significant effect on how fast we spin. Think of a figure skater spinning on the ice. When their arms are open wide, they rotate slowly. When they pull their arms in, they accelerate. Earthquakes can cause the Earth to spin faster. Typically what happens is you get one tectonic plate slipping underneath another one. That drives more rock down under the surface of the Earth. More mass moving towards the center, faster spin. We're talking about very small amounts though. The Japanese earthquake in 2011 accelerated the Earth's rotation by 1.8 microseconds. That's 1 100th of a millisecond, which was 1 100th of a blink. So a very small amount, but this all adds up. Water also has an effect on the distribution of weight around the world. Yes, we can blame this on climate change, but this happens in a really weird way. So polar ice caps are melting. That puts more water in the ocean, in spite of what Mel Gibson might try and tell you, because the ice is on the land right now, and when it melts, then it can flow down into the water. But in this case, when we have more water moving from the poles to the equator, it's like a figure skater reaching out with their arms. It's supposed to slow them down. 
but there's an even greater effect caused by the weight of the ice on the polar regions. You see, these ice caps are huge concentrations of mass, and the Earth's gravity pulls them in towards the center. And that force is actually enough to squeeze the Earth a little bit and make the entire planet bulge out in the middle. That's way heavier than just the ocean water, but as the ice caps melt and the weight is distributed more evenly, the Earth is getting less squozen. It becomes more circular. The figure skater's arms come in, and we spin faster. Anyway, what does this all mean? Well, since the Earth has generally been rotating slower over time, we've been adding leap seconds to the standard day in order to keep it in sync with the Earth's rotation. This has happened a few times now. The most recent leap second occurred in 2016, so when we say that one day is 24 hours, we're actually rounding down slightly. It's really 24 hours and a few seconds. But if the Earth continues to accelerate its rotation, then we might end up eventually having to take one of those leap seconds away, essentially bringing the length of a day back down closer to where it was when we started measuring the Earth with atomic clocks back in the 1970s. Now, unless you're the person in charge of the GPS network or some other critical timekeeping software, I wouldn't worry too much about it. There is definitely much more concerning stuff that's happening on the Earth, but this one is kind of fun to know about. Now, here's something really cool. This is a video taken inside the sun's atmosphere. It was just released by NASA, and the images were recorded by a spacecraft called the Parker Solar Probe. What we're looking at here is the sun blasting out electrical charged particles into space. The big cloud-like structure is a piece of the corona, that's like the outer surface of the sun, and everything that you see blasting past the camera is the solar wind. It's a constant stream of electrically charged particles that rage across the solar system, essentially creating solar weather. The Earth is mostly protected from this stuff by a magnetic field, but every so often a big chunk of this corona gets kicked out into space by the sun's own energy, a coronal mass ejection. And sometimes, those will hit the Earth, causing auroras in the northern sky, and if the ejection is powerful enough, it can also mess with our electrical grids and communication systems. So we've known for a long time that this happens, but right now is the first time that we've seen it up close. The Parker Solar Probe was launched in 2018, and it had the goal of reaching closer to the sun than any man-made object. It would essentially be the first thing to touch the sun. That happened when the spacecraft made its first close approach to the sun in 2021, when it entered the corona for the first time. Then the probe would fly out to Venus, where it would use the planet's gravity to slingshot itself back towards the sun, getting closer and closer to the star with every pass. Currently, the Parker Solar Probe is just over 6 million kilometers from what we consider the surface of the sun, which is far below the corona. This is as close as the probe will get. It doesn't have enough fuel to keep flying around Venus and accelerating, but it's already moving fast enough that it won't get pulled into the sun or anything like that. So it's going to keep making these close passes through the atmosphere and collect as much data along the way as possible. There are a few important things that we're trying to learn with this probe. One really weird fact about the sun that we don't understand is that the surface of the star is actually much colder than the outer corona layer. So it's about 5,500 degrees Celsius on the surface of the sun, but when you get out to the corona, it heats up to millions of degrees. Sounds kind of strange, right? You would think that if the sun is the source of all heat in the solar system, then it would come from the middle, but it doesn't. The heat is actually on the outside. There's also the mystery of the solar wind. We know that it exists, but we don't know how it exists. We don't understand the forces that create the wind or what accelerates it out into space. So we are trying to follow the origins and the movement of those electrically charged particles. And even if we can't understand the solar wind, we do want to get better at predicting it. Right now, we don't know if a coronal mass ejection is coming until it's already on the way, so that doesn't give us much time to prepare. Most of these just cause some pretty lights in the sky and maybe a flicker on the power grid, but eventually a giant solar storm will come, and when it does, we are going to find out what life is like with no electricity, no internet, no communication of any kind, and things won't go well. So to wrap that up, don't worry about the Earth's rotation, it's fine. Do worry about the sun, because it might kill us all. There's probably not anything we can do about it, but we might be able to at least see it coming, which might be worse.